With so many events and so much information to share, it could get difficult to keep up. The good news is that you can stay up to date with all things CRC by visiting our website. From information about service times to amazing sermons by Pastor Ad, you can get it all in one place. For more information, visit our website at crcchurch.com. Unlock the melody within your unused instruments. Donate today and empower aspiring musicians. Your generosity resonates with the harmony of opportunity. Make a difference by donating your musical instruments. For more information on how you can donate, contact your zone pastor or visit your nearest information desk. Sunday is definitely our favorite day of the week and here is how we spend it at CRC. Welcome to The Move. How amazing and wonderful and comforting is it to know that doesn't matter what this world throws at us, God has you in the palm of His hands and He's working it all for your good. Let's hear what some of our members had to say. The highlight for me for the, from the service was the fact that in as much as your circumstances might be looking otherwise, you must trust in the Lord and have faith that at the end it will all work out. In a moment of darkness, in the middle of a pit, to remind yourself that God is working everything together for good. And that reminder just gave me so much hope. Just to remind us that God is really raising leaders and we are the leaders that God is raising to bring about the change in our society, in our community in South Africa. We had our baby dedications and it was incredible to see so many parents make a public declaration to raise their little ones in the ways and house of God. If you'd like to dedicate your own little ones, visit our CRC help desk or speak to your zone pastor for more information. And that's it from us. Don't forget to invite your friends and your family for Passover weekend when we commemorate the death the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is the ultimate sacrifice, the greatest gift, and God's gift to us of His one and only Son. Please comment down below and share with us how great your Sunday was.
belongs to him the lamb of god that was slain come on from the foundation of the earth come on crc lift your hands look to the lamb the lamb of god that takes away the sin of the world He's worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Come on, sing it one more time. Look to the Lamb. Come on, look. See the Son of God, the Savior, crucified for you and me. Come on, eyes wide, wide, wide. Look to the left. There is love, and there is fire, not a fire of judgment. Come on, we're gonna sing it one more time. Look to the left. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. One more time and say it, he is worthy. Come on, he is worthy, worthy, worthy. Come on, family, let's give our Jesus the biggest praise on this Good Friday. Come on, pass over. Come on, they're in Johannesburg, they're in Bloemfontein. Give the Lord Jesus, come on. This is the foundation of our Christianity, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus. And I want to tell you, we're going to talk about it on Sunday. Jesus Christ is alive and you and I have been redeemed with the blood of the Lamb. That's why we can take our eyes off this world all the troubles and all the cares and all the worries and we can look to the Lamb. Come on, give the Lamb of God one more mighty praise in this place today in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody say He is worthy. Jesus is worthy to receive our praise, our worship, our adoration. Come on, they're in Bloomingdale, the many thousands gathered there. In Johannesburg, the many thousands gathered there. All our social media platforms and YouTube, we welcome you today. This is the day that the Lord has made for our redemption. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Hallelujah. Come on, man, Philippians 4 says, Verblij yourself in the Lord. Verblij yourself in God. Here is a good day. Here is a day of your verlossing. A day of your overwinning. A day of your befreiding. Here is the day that God has seen to steer on for your sins to betaal. Hij heeft jou gereed van die doop, hij heeft jou gereed van de hel, hij heeft jou gereed van oordeel. Daarom kan jij kibbel en juich van ogen in die naam van Jezus Christus. Halleluja. Oh, come on man, this is not a Sunday morning, this is Good Friday. Give somebody a high five and say, Jesus loves you. Come on, tell them. Worthy. Come on, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Come on. Come on, the in Johannesburg. Lift your hands. He's worthy. He's worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Oh, I feel I just want to praise God all day. Come on, let's do this right, please. Come on, let's give Him praise. 
Hallelujah. He's worthy. I say Jesus Christ is worthy. Come on. Oh, I feel there's a praise in you today. You are happy. You are glad for what the Lord has done. Now you can lift this roof wherever you are today and give Him a mighty praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God bless you. Take your, your seats in heavenly places this morning. I only have good news for you. My message this morning, a perfect setup. The cross was a setup. It wasn't a setup, a little bit soft on the piano, thank you. It wasn't a setup by the devil. It was a setup by God Himself for you and me. So I have a lot of good news to share with you this morning. So many scriptures to share with you this morning in the name of Jesus. So Luke chapter 23, and we read from verse 1. Then a whole multitude of them arose and led him, that is Jesus, to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation, forbidding to pay taxes to Caesar. Lies. Saying that he himself is a Christ, a king. Then Pilate asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered and said, It is as you say. Can somebody say this morning, Jesus Christ is king. Say it. So Pilate said to the chief priests and to the crowd, I find no fault in this man. And they were the most fierce saying, he stirs up the people teaching throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee to this place. And when Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked if the man was a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Now when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceedingly glad. I, watch, I want you to see how Herod changes because of public opinion. For he had desired for a long time to see him because he had heard many things about him and he hoped to see some miracle done by him. Then he questioned him with many words, but he answered him nothing. The chief priest and the scribes stood and vehemently accused him. Then Herod, with his men of war, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Think about it for a moment. This is the creator of the heavens and the earth on trial for you and me. This is God who could call down 12 legions of angels, 72,000 angels. And we know one angel is enough to kill, to wipe out a whole city. This is God on trial for you and me. Think about it for a moment. I want to read all the scriptures so we can see what happened on that day before Jesus is crucified. To see what Jesus went through for you and me. How He was humiliated, how He's falsely accused, how He is shamed, how He is betrayed. And we're talking about the Creator of the heavens and the earth. We're talking about the God who had the power to get off that cross at any second. He's on trial for doing what? Only good. He's accused for doing what? For bringing good news to the people. So Herod, with his men, treated him with contempt and mocked him, arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him back to Pilate. That very day, Pilate and Herod became hands or friends with each other and previously they had been at enmity with each other. Then Pilate, when he called together the chief priests and rulers and the people, said to them, You have brought this man to me as one who misleads the people. And indeed, having examined him in your presence, I have found no, mock, no fault in this man concerning those things of which you accuse him. No, neither did Herod. For I sent you back to him, and indeed nothing deserving of death has been done by him. I will therefore chastise him and release him, for it was necessary for him to release one of them at the least. And they all cried out at once, saying, Away with this man and release to us Barabbas. Now, this is amazing. It is the same people that welcomed him into Jerusalem, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the king. That's how fickle people are. Now shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Being incited by the jealous Pharisees and the Sadducees. 
and he had been thrown into prison for a certain rebellion made in the city and for murder. Pilate therefore wishing to release Jesus again called out to them and they shouted saying crucify him, crucify him. Then he said to them the third time, third time he's trying to say but Jesus is innocent. He has done no wrong. Why what evil has he done? I have found no reason for death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. But they were insistent, demanding with loud voices that he be crucified. The voices of these men and of the chief priests prevailed. So Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they requested. And they released to them the one they requested for the rebellion and murder that had been thrown into prison. And he delivered Jesus to their will. Down to verse 32. There were also two others, criminals, led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. The criminals, one to the right and the other to the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Hallelujah. Forgive your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Love those who hate you. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments, cast lots, and the people stood looking, but even the rulers with him sneered, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he is the Christ, the chosen one of God. And we know Jesus could have saved himself. I mean, he could have wiped out the whole world in a second, but he did not. Why? Because of his love for you. He had all the power and all the authority and he laid it down on that cross for you and me so we can be redeemed. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Then give the Lord a praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the soldiers mocked him and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Verse 38. And the inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin and Hebrew, saying, the King of the Jews, hallelujah. But He's more than the King of the Jews. He's the King of the world. He's your King and He's my King. And that day He established the fact that God not only loves the Jew, the Jew first, but God loves the Gentile as well. Then one of the criminals who were hanging blasphemed Him saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. I've been at the bedside of many people who died and I've seen many blaspheme God with their last breath. At the same time, I've seen many people cry out for mercy, living a life of sin in that final moment. They pray the sinner's prayer and they're in heaven. They just made it. Hallelujah. But the other answered and rebuked him saying, do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? We indeed justly, for we receive this dear reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Paradise, a compartment of Hades. Four words for hell. I'm not going to talk about all of them. Paradise is the place called Abram's bosom where the Old Testament saints were held until Jesus died and ascended and took them into the Father's presence. I want to talk to this man one day. This man who with his final breath said, Lord, have mercy on me. You see, if we don't understand what Jesus did, we always think we are saved by our works. And if we do things right, we are okay with God. This man, listen, with his final breath cries out for God's mercy. He's not baptized. So people say those who are not baptized don't go to heaven. Well, this man made heaven and he wasn't baptized. The Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come on, when you call on the name of Jesus and you believe on the name of Jesus, you shall be saved because the, oh, because the price have been paid. Come on, in and give the Lord a praise there on television, wherever you are today. Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. It was about the sixth hour and there were darkness over the earth until the ninth hour. The time of the evening sacrifice, the Passover lamb sacrificed under Jewish tradition once a year. Jesus becomes our sacrificial lamb. He is slain on the cross at the evening sacrifice, exactly the same time. It was about the sixth hour and there was darkness over the earth, God's judgment until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was torn in two. Hallelujah. 
When Jesus cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed out his last. When the centurion saw what happened, he glorified God saying, certainly this was a righteous man. I want to talk about a perfect setup. The cross was a setup, but not the setup that the people who set it up thought it was, if that makes sense. I mean, the Sadducees, you know what the Sadducees are? Are those sad Christians that suck lemons all the time. The Sadducees and the Pharisees, although they incited the mob against Jesus Christ, it was not their set up. And they did this, the Bible says in Mark chapter 1 verse 10, Herod knew that the chief priest handed him over because of jealousy. It wasn't a setup by Judas who sold him for 30 pieces of silver. Imagine that. Not really knowing what he was doing. And he betrayed him with a kiss. It was not a setup by Pilate who led the trial or Herod who also got involved in the trial. It wasn't a setup by the mob, the angry mob. The, one, the people who shouted one day, Hosanna, 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 glory to the King. They are the same ones. Think about it. That astounds me, amazes me, because the Bible says, had books been written about all the things Jesus did, the world would not be able to contain those book, books. And yet these people, because of incitement, because of jealousy, they are turned against Jesus Christ. And w where they shouted, Hosanna, now they shout, crucify Him insistently crucify him so much pressure upon the political leaders of the day that they gave in to public opinion think about that crucify him Pilate three times says I have found this man innocent let him go he washes his hand and he says this man's blood will not be on my hands because he's innocent and he had to be innocent to become the sacrificial lamb for you and me because there's nothing innocent about you. He had to become a, a, a sin and, 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 and the sins of God had to be placed upon him so that you could be delivered from your sin. This setup was not even planned by the devil, although the devil planned it and the devil incited the religious leader rulers against Jesus Christ. But the devil got caught in his own craftiness. What he thought was his master stroke against Jesus Christ was God's master plan to disarm him and to defeat him and to break the hold of sin and death over the seed of Christ. Say Amen in Jesus' name. The Bible says, none of the rulers of this age knew for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So don't miss Sunday. Sunday morning, if you're not yet, watch on YouTube or wherever because I'm gonna talk about the importance of the resurrection. We have to understand our faith and what we believe and the power of the resurrection. Today we talk about the death and the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, what it means for us so we can understand. But we have to understand the power of the resurrection because Paul says, if Jesus had not risen, our faith is in vain. He says, then we are more feeble than anybody else in this world. But Christ is risen. He's alive today. Oh, come on. I know we're talking about the cross today, but you can, you give this risen Saviour a praise. Come on, somebody stand to your feet and give Him a praise. He's alive. Come on. So yes, the cross was a set up, but it was God's set up. Where atonement was made for your sins and for my sins and where Satan was finally defeated. It was not man, but it was God who put his son on the cross. The Bible says it makes no sense because it's, it's foolishness to us. We can't understand it. That the son of God, the one who created the heavens and the earth, the one who chose to be born through a virgin and become a little baby, sinless, spotless, had to go through what He went through for you and me. Think about it for a moment. The Creator of the heavens and the earth, shamed and humiliated publicly by His creation. Falsely accused, mocked, found innocent by Pilate and yet the mob insisted that He was guilty. 
A murderer, Barabbas, released in his place. He was beaten. He was tortured. He was nailed to a cross by men. The Bible says he was so tortured. People have this picture of Jesus on the cross, uh, you know, with a few drops of blood hanging out, coming out of him. He was beaten, the Bible says, with a cat of nine tails, uh, 39 times. That's 39 times nine. And, and, and that whip had nine tails with jagged pieces of rock and metal attached to them. So when Jesus was beaten, the, the flesh was ripped off his body. That he survived that was a miracle. The Bible says he was marred beyond recognition. You could not recognize he was a human being, your savior. You, you have this little nice picture of Jesus, no. His beard was plucked out. He was spat upon. He was beaten. He was kicked. He was beaten with sticks. He was beaten with that cat of nine tails that should have kicked him. Uh, the historians say that his, his rib cage was left bare. You could see his intestines, everything. It, isn't this perfect little picture that you see? And then finally, they put him on the cross and God allows it because of his love for you and me. He puts His Son on the cross. He allows His Son to go through humiliation, through shame, through public scourging. At any time the Father could intervene, but He does not. Why? Because God so loved you and me. You ever doubt the love of God again? I pray you get a picture of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago when He hung on that cross. He hung on that cross in your place. He was the perfect substitute. Come on. He was the Lamb of God that took away the sin of the world. Oh, come on. He was the one who suffered. He was the one who was bruised. He was the one who take your punishment upon Him. He faced the wrath and the anger and the judgment of God in your stead. So you don't have to. Oh, you can do better than that. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. I mean, He's mocked even to His last breath. And after his death, the crowd kept on going. And they came looking at the Savior hanging on the cross. And the Bible says they beat upon their chests in victory, triumph. That's how glad they were. They thought they got rid of the Savior, the devil behind it, Real, religious looter, rulers behind it, betrayal behind it. Politicians behind it. That's why I tell you that you will never be able to stop the church of Jesus Christ because he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. I'll tell you what Satan meant for evil. God will turn around for good in the name of Jesus. I'll tell you why. Because of what your Savior did 2,000 years ago. And if he did it for his son, God's going to do it for you as well. God's going to lift you up. God's going to raise you up. God's going to roll the stone away. And you are going to come out of your grave. And you are going to live the life that God has for you. Say a good amen today. So it is the hand of the Father that puts his son on the cross because of his love for you and me. It was God set up. Makes no sense. I mean, actually, it's unimaginable. But because... For a soul to be saved, there has to be shedding of blood. And the shedding of the blood of bulls and goats could never remit sin. That means could never remove sin. It covered sin. So God had to come with His master stroke, which the rulers of this world thought were their master plan. You see, God will always outsmart and outwit the devil. Those religious leaders thought it's the end of Jesus, but it was the beginning. Hallelujah. Herod thought it was the end of Jesus, but it was the beginning. Hallelujah. People may think it is your end. I'll tell you it is your beginning. Oh, say amen. We're going to talk about it. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells on the inside of you. Your best days are ahead because of what God did through Christ. Isaiah 53, the Bible says, Surely he has borne our griefs. Talking about Jesus now on the cross. That word grieves means he bore your sicknesses. It's not God's will for you to suffer with sickness and disease. Jesus paid the price for your sickness. He made atonement. Are you listening to me? It's God's will for you to, 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 to be delivered from suffering. He didn't just die to get you to heaven. He carried our sorrows, our pains, our emotional pains on the cross. 
Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. What peace is the Bible talking about? We can have peace with God. We don't be afraid of God. We have peace. We have access to the Father because of the sacrifice. The Bible says by his stripes we are healed. Those 39 stripes that cut into his body, that ripped the flesh off of his body. He paid that price for your physical healing. Listen to me this morning. He says, all we like sheep have gone astray. It's the nature of a sheep, right? A sheep needs a shepherd. And we've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. On that day, God placed your sin, past, present, future, upon his son. And God sacrificed his son as the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. God made atonement for your sin through paying the highest price, putting His Son on that cross as your substitute in your stead. Bible says He was oppressed, He was afflicted, yet He opened not His mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter because He was. And as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so He opened not His mouth. Imagine! He opens his mouth and he says, Father, forgive them. He could have opened his mouth and he could have said, Fire, come down. And he could have destroyed everybody, but he did not. That's why in the Garden of Gethsemane, he sweated great drops of blood in agony. And he said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but thy will be done. He knew it was going to cost him everything. He, the creator of heaven and earth, nailed to a tree by the very creation He loves. Yet it was the hand of God that put Him on that cross to redeem you and me, to buy us back from sin, from the slavery and the hold and the bondage of sin that entered this world through the disobedience of Adam. The Bible says He was taken out of prison from judgment. Who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions, the sins, the iniquities of my people. He was stricken and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. I just want to tell you, I'm going to show you, we're going to do a fact check on Sunday morning about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay. And, uh, Jesus fulfilled over 350 prophecies from the Old Testament. And uh, for any person to fulfill eight prophecies, the chances of that is 1 to 10 with 27 zeros. Now, you listen to me, I can even work with my own numbers, because I don't know. I tell them to go to a billion. I can do it with a million. So far can I tell. Dis so min kans daar was, dat die story van Jesus Christus nie die waarheid was nie. Hy het, seker mense sê 326 profesie vervul, anders sê 350 profesie vervul. Dis onmoendlik vir enige mens om die profesie te vervul. Dis onmoendlik. That's why, listen, I'm studying the Quran a little bit. I'm not going to become a Muslim. But to see that they actually believe in Jesus Christ, they're just being lied to. That they actually believe that Jesus is the anointed one. They actually believe that Jesus is the prophet. I'm not going to get into that. Every religion acknowledges the existence of Jesus Christ because He is irrefutable. He lived undeniably. He walked on this earth. Every historian talks about it. When it comes to the resurrection, that's where people say, He has not risen. But I want to tell you, Jesus Christ has risen from the grave and He is alive. The fact that you are here, born again, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, is proof of the resurrection of Jesus. Oh, just give the Lord a praise. This is Friday. I mean, these fools, I call them fools, on social media they debate uh, about the existence of God. I'll give you the fact. Uh, how the more people try to disprove His existence, the more they found that He did exist. 
Uh, the more people they try to find contradictions, the more they find there is no contradiction. <laughs> because God is God. I mean, God is God. God's not God by permission. God's not God by debate. God is God all by Himself. And He worked this out from before the foundations of the earth. Jesus was never God's plan B. Jesus Christ was God's plan A. Even long before He put Adam and Eve in the garden, He says, before the foundations of the earth, I prepared the Lamb of God that will redeem you, not with silver and gold, but with the precious blood of a lamb. God did this. He was our safety net from Genesis to Revelation. And still today, He is your safety net. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, verse 10, It pleased the Lord, the Father, to bruise Him. Why? Because of His love for you. His Son. He who was and is and is to come. Born as a, a, a baby. Having to suffer the humiliation, the betrayal, the accusation, the crucifixion because of His love for you. So my friend, yeah, you need a revelation of this because if you understand what God did for you, you'll never doubt the love that God has for you. And you will not live in the fear of God's judgment every day of your life because you will understand that God judged His Son in your stead. He faced your punishment on that cross. That's why it pleased the Father. People say God looked away when His Son was crucified. No, He did not. The Father accepted the sacrifice Jesus cried out because He became sin. Do you understand this? My God, my God, why hast Thou forsaken me? Because the one who is sinless and spotless in a moment, in those three hours when darkness is upon the face of the earth, Jesus doesn't just bear your sin. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 21, He becomes sin. All the sins of humanity is placed upon Jesus and He faces the wrath and the anger and the judgment of God. It's all poured upon Him. Therefore, that's why He died. He didn't die physically. He died before He should have died physically. Medically, any doctor can say it because He gave up the ghost. The punishment was so severe. The trauma He went through on that cross, His heart burst. If you study history and, 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 and medically what happened to Jesus, that's why they pierced, when they pierced His side, water came out. He was already dead. His heart had burst on the inside of His chest. The agony, the pain that He went through, the trauma that He went through. He that is God becomes sin. Do you even comprehend that? He doesn't sin. He becomes sin. And the wrath and the anger of the Father is poured upon Him. For you and me. So we don't have to ever face the wrath and the anger and the judgment of God. His Son is judged in your state. Oh, you better listen to me. Because people come and they say, God's going to judge you. No, God judged you 2,000 years ago in His Son, Jesus Christ. He judged the sin. He judged you. That doesn't mean you live as a sinner. Because when you experience Christ, the power of sin is broken over your life. Say amen today in Jesus' name. The price has been paid. Atonement has been made. So He took my punishment, my pain, my sin, my death, my curse, the poverty, my poverty, my shame. In exchange, He gave me forgiveness, healing, righteousness, eternal life, blessing, freedom from slavery. The cross is God's master stroke. 1 Peter 1, the Bible says, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold from your aimless conduct received by the tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was ordained before, hallelujah, before Adam ever messed up, God had you in mind, your redemption. God already knew of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. It's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Seven things Jesus did on the cross in the next. How much time do you have? Because it's Easter service and people want to say the pastor must keep it short. Seven minutes. 
Now you now you're clock watching. <laughs> Seven things that happened on the cross. Number one, he bore our sin, he became sin, so we could become righteous. Bible says in Romans 5 verse 17, For if by one man's offense death reigned through life, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through Christ Jesus. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the cross, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Justification, just as if you never sinned. So if God sees you today, God sees you justified. Say praise the Lord. Come on. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. The law points to sin. Jesus points to grace, the remedy of sin. So the Bible says, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. So that sin reign, as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Number two, you see I'm going quick. God placed, Jesus faced God's wrath, God's judgment and punishment in your stead. Ephesians 5 verse 8, the Bible says, verse 9, God demonstrated His own love toward us. In while we were sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. You can't save yourself. You can't fix yourself. You can't work your way back to God. You have to accept the sacrifice Jesus paid. It says much more, verse 9 says, Having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath, God's judgment through Him. 1 Peter chapter 4, the Bible says, If we fear the judgment of God, which brings torment, we have not been established in the love of God. It means we don't understand what Jesus did 2,000 years on the cross. Number three, how are we doing? He destroyed the devil's power over your life. So no longer talk as if you are under. You are not under, you are above. Jesus broke the devil's authority over your life. Shout Amen. Genesis chapter 3, it was prophesied. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and the seed. And her seed, capital letter S, not humanity, seed is Jesus. So Abraham's seed is Christ. It's not you and me. If we are in Christ, we are in the seed and we are partakers of the blessing that is upon the seed who is Jesus Christ. The Bible says, He shall bruise your head and you will bruise His heel. So what happens on the cross is the heel of Jesus is bruised. But it's God's master plan to destroy the headship of the serpent. The head talks about authority. That's why Jesus in Matthew 28 says, all authority belongs to me in heaven and in earth. He stripped the devil. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about it on Sunday. He defeated Satan publicly. He defeated the devil in his own turf. He defeated the devil in hell. And he took from him the keys of hell and death. Oh, we are going to see that one day. I'm going to tell you God's going to show us a movie or however it's going to be where we are going to see Jesus in hell and the devil and his demons dancing and doing whatever they're doing, thinking they've got the Saviour. But then something happened. The Spirit of the Lord descended into the corridors of hell. There was a sound like a rushing mighty wind that the devil knew nothing about. And suddenly Jesus came alive because the Bible says the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. It was the Spirit of God that descended into the corridors of hell. And Jesus rose in the corridors of hell where the devil had the authority and the keys of hell and death. And that Jesus Christ defeated him publicly, the Bible says, triumphing over the devil. And he took the keys of hell and death and he rose from the grave. And he said, behold, I am he that was dead, but I'm alive forever and I have the keys of Hades and I have the keys of death hallelujah that means death no longer has power over you you have been redeemed you have been delivered by the sacrifice of Jesus so death was Satan's master plan but it was God's master stroke 
Because God is always one step ahead. I know there's so many preach that sermon, but I want to say to you guys, a billion steps ahead. Hallelujah. Hebrews 2 verse 14, the Bible says, In as, as much then as the children have partaken flesh and blood, he himself likewise shed in the same. He became a human like us. That through death, that through death, why did Jesus have to die? Through death, he might destroy him who had power of death. That is the devil. Jesus destroyed his power. Stop glorifying the devil and begin to glorify Jesus Christ. Come on, can you lift up the name? We're almost done. Come on. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, it's the right thing to do. Lift him up. And they release those who through fear of death were their lifetime subject to bondage. You know, if you're still afraid of death, you're not right with God. You know that, right? That person I'm reaching, I'm reaching a lot of people in gym. Somebody over there said to me, I don't see you in gym. I said, because I'm at another gym. I'm going to be with my 12. Um, and the guy just said the right thing. I know I've said it, but I started talking to me and he said, you know, last night I was thinking about death. I said, mm. <laughs> you better think about death. Want as jy doe, waar gaan jy? It's like, sometimes people are so, trying to be so intelligent. I was, I was watching a debate yesterday. I like debates. And the person is an atheist, a well-known, outspoken atheist. And Piers Morgan and many others have debated with this guy. And uh, he's just like, no, when you die, you're just going to rot in the ground. You're just going to be rot. That's intelligent? Where did all this come from? Oh, from nothing. Then he wants to quantify nothing. Negative matter versus positive matter uh, brings you to nothing. So there's a movement between the negative matters and the positive matters and it brings you to nothing. Look, if you have to explain what nothing is, you don't know what nothing is because there's no such thing as nothing. Can you say amen today? Come on. <laughs> So, 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 so men especially are good with that. They like have a nothing box, right? Where the wife talks to them and say, nothing, what's wrong? Nothing. No vrouw's rij ding ook aangeleer, hulle sê die selle nou vandag. Nee, wat voor niks. What are you thinking about? Nothing. Possibly if you're a man. I'll give you that, because I'm one as well. Because sometimes we just go, duh. Why was not understand that? Because their brains are like all over the place. And the brother's just sitting there chilling out. And really he's thinking about nothing. <laughs> and I'll say, bro, what's fault me? Leave me, what's fault? Next is fault me. I'm in my nothing box. <laughs> Empty space. What's that got to do with the sermon? Nothing. Number four, he redeemed us. The word redemption means he bought us back. He purchased us back. That means ownership. That means the devil no longer owns us. The curse no longer owns us. We have been redeemed. We have been purchased back. We are, we have been purchased from out of the curse of the law. Galatians 3, 13 and 14, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Jesus Christ, to Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. And uh, a certain religion believe, it's a very funny thing, I look at these debates and there are some people brilliant that um, the one religion that cannot, no religion can actually dispute the, the, the fact that Jesus existed. And they all call him in their whatever, the anointed prophet. Yeah. Then they believe that whoever they now follow is the comforter. But the comforter is the Holy Ghost that Jesus Christ said, come on. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit. 
The Holy Ghost. Number five. He nailed the consequences of your sin. That's judgment, shame, condemnation, guilt on the cross. He has forgiven you. All the accusations of the devil has been nailed to the cross. So people remind you of your past. You remind them of your future. Come on, say amen. It says you being dead in trespasses and uncircumcision of your flesh, he's made alive together with him, having forgiven you all your trespasses. Say I'm forgiven. Having wiped out the handwriting of the requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and He has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. On that day, your sins were nailed to the cross. Your guilt and your shame and your fear of judgment was nailed to the cross. Say praise God or amen or something. Look happy or glad that Jesus did. And He disarmed principality and power. That means the devil doesn't have power. He disarmed them. He took away the weapons. What is the weapons of the devil? Accusation. What is the weapon of the the, the devil? Condemnation. He took away the weapons of the devil and he set you free. Freely justified you and declared you righteous before his father through the eternal sacrifice that he offered. Number six, he made peace between God and us. That veil was rent from the top to bottom. That is God cutting a covenant. That veil was a huge, thick, woven, material, massive uh, curtain. Not a little curtain. That was cut. When Jesus cried, it is finished. Signifying what? The end of the old, the beginning of the new. The old covenant is over. There is a way into the holy of holies. No longer just the high priest. But you and I have access to God through the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. The tabernacle that was broken, the veil that was broken was the veil of His flesh. His flesh was torn and therefore symbolically the flesh between the holy place and the holy of holies is reigned from top to bottom. And signifies that now we have access into the presence of God because of the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. I'm going to do a series on the blood of Jesus. It says, He pleased the Father that in Him all the fullness should dwell, and by Him to reconcile all things to Himself, by Him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of His cross. And you were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, now as He reconciled. So um, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 8 in the Bible says, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing the sins of people unto them. Meaning God said, I'm going to deal, you be- deal with you better. I've made my peace with you. You now need to make your peace with me. Number seven, the inauguration of a new covenant. And that's too much to talk about now. The Bible says if the first covenant had been faultless, there would not be place for a new covenant. God says, but I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And I will write my law on their hearts and on their minds. And their sins and their iniquities I will no longer remember. Go read Hebrews 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And read about this covenant that you have with Jesus Christ. What the blood did. Because the blood and bulls and goats could only cover the memory of sin. But it could not clear the conscience of sin. Therefore a new covenant was required. And that was this covenant that God cut with you and me. So yes, the cross was a setup. But it was a setup of God's divine love. It was a setup for you and me, Gentiles in the flesh, to have access to a God who loves us. It was a declaration by God that God so loved the world that whoever believed in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That God sent His Son into this world not to judge or condemn the world but to save the world. That means you and me. That God was in Christ foolishness to our understanding but that suffering was planned by the father as a work of substitution in your stead he put his son on the cross each and every one of you young and old he hung on that cross for you and when Jesus said father forgive them it was not only for those who put him on the cross it was for you and me Forgive them. Accept the sacrifice. Forgive them. Therefore, today, 
you can receive forgiveness of sin. Today you can accept the ultimate sacrifice. That day it pleased the Father put his, to put His Son on the cross. The Lord laid the iniquity of all of us on Him, each and every one of us. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, For by one offering He has forever perfected those who are sanctified. The Bible in, in Hebrews 9 says He is the mediator of a new and a better covenant. That we can now, Hebrews 10, enter the presence of God by a new and a living way, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Not religion, not tradition, not works, not law. By accepting what Jesus did, 2,000 euros. That's why Ephesians 2 says, For by grace you are saved through faith. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. You can't work for your salvation. You can't work for your repentance. You have to accept what Jesus did for you 2,000 years ago. He paid the price for all your sin. He made His peace with you. And He hung on that cross with His arms open wide. And still today, at the right hand of the Father, He lives to intercede for you. So that you can make your peace with God. He made His peace with you. He made vrede with you. Hij verklaar, ek is nie jou vijand nie, ek is nie vir jou kwaad nie. Ongeacht wat jy gedoen het, jou wandade, jou oortredinge, jou sondes nie. Daar is niks wat jy kan skuif van my liefde, wat ek gedemonstreer het aan die kruis, dier my Seen Christus nie. Daar is staan tot in alle eeuwigheid, een dispensatie van genade, wat niemand kan verander nie. Dit staan, tot Christus terugkom, en die nieuwe dispensatie weer begin. Maar nou, een dispensatie van genade en waarheid, wat geanker is, gesetel is, in sy Seen Christus, wat die prijs betaal het vir jou. Jy sê, wat moet ek doen, what must I do? You have to accept, what Jesus did, and make your peace, with God. There is no sacrifice, there is nothing you can do. People on Easter still want to sacrifice lambs, even now today in Africa, and in South Africa, and people get mad when I talk about it, especially maybe in Johannesburg, I don't know, um, because we think we have to do things and, 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 and shed blood to, to get right with God. The Bible says there remains no more sacrifice. There remains no more offering. The price has been paid. I mean, you can go slaughter a million bulls. It's not going to get you right with God. You can go slaughter all the sheep in South Africa. It's not going to get you right with God. The Lamb of God has been slain. Hallelujah. The price has been paid for your redemption. The blood has been shed. And it's blood that cries out this morning, not the blood of Abel that cries out for vengeance, but the blood of the Lamb that says, Mercy, Father, mercy, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they, what they, what they do, for they are like sheep that go astray. But my Father, I paid the price for them. Forgive them, Father, forgive them. And God accepted that offering. That's why when you come into the presence of God, there's not judgment, there's mercy, there's grace, there's love, there's forgiveness, there's upliftment. That is the God that you serve today. Come on, give Him one more praise in this place. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, give Him praise. Come on, let's stand to our feet and give Him praise. Hallelujah. Come on, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 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 Come on there in Johannesburg, praise Him. There in Bloomington, praise Him, nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus, hallelujah. Oh Father, we worship You for Jesus. We worship You for the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. We thank You that the blood speaks today. We thank You the power of the devil is broken over our lives, Father. We thank You that the grave is empty this morning. We thank You that the price has been paid, atonement has been made. You have made peace with us. Now You're calling us to accept the sacrifice that you made by putting your son on the cross. You are mindful of us, Father. You love us. And it's not your will for any to perish. When your son, on, your son hung, hung on that cross, it was for each and every one of us. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you. For the price you paid, we thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
In Jesus' name. Touch every heart now, Holy Spirit, I pray. Bring the lost home, the prodigals, and take your place in every heart. While every head is bowed, every eye closed, no one moving this morning. You're standing in this place, the floor, the balcony in Bloomfontein. They're in Johannesburg this morning. You heard the message. You heard the gospel. Good news. Maybe this morning you're one of those people you've thought about death. And if you die today, you don't know where you would spend eternity. Today you can change that. You can make your peace with God. You're not here by accident. Somebody invited you, but it was God's plan for you to hear this message. There is a heaven to gain. There's a hell to shun. Today you're standing in this place. Maybe at one time you served God, but you've grown cold. You've wandered away from Him. It's time to come back. Time to make your peace with God. Maybe like the prodigal, you've walked away from your father's house. I don't know. But today there's a stirring in your heart and you want to get right with Jesus. I want to pray for you. You want a new beginning. On this day when God cut a new covenant with us, in your heart there is desire. I need a new beginning with God. From dag in jou hart is daar een roering. Ek het een nieuwe begin met God nodig. Dis jou kees en jou besluit. Hy staan by die deur van jou hart en hy klop, maar jy moet oopmaak. 2000 years ago, he made a declaration publicly of the love he has for you. Now it's your time to make your peace with God. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one moving, please. You're standing in this place today and you say, Pastor, that's me. I need a new beginning, a fresh start. I want to come back. I want to surrender my life to Christ. If that is your desire, quietly, wherever you are, just slip your hand up. I want to say a prayer for you. Quickly, raise your hand all over this place. Raise it up. Raise it up. Up, up, up. High. Quickly. Raise it up. Raise it up. God bless you. God bless you, bless you, bless you, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you, bless you. Many people. God bless you, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Slip it up. Slip it up. Quickly. Quickly. Now. In your heart there's a stirring. This is your moment. This is your time. Before I pray, you've not yet raised your hand. You say, include me in that prayer. Quickly. As I look one more time. Forget your friends. This is God talking to you. Two thieves on the cross. One mocked him. The one cried out. The one got saved because he called out. Before I pray, thank you for those hands on the balcony. God bless you. Bless you. Last time, lift your hand now. In Jesus' name. Slip it up. Now. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Please look at me. Many, many people raise their hands. I know people want to get away. Family is waiting for lunch and all these kind of things, etc. But hey, we need to pause here. This is what it's all about. Okay? So all over this place, many of you raised your hands. Jesus walked to the cross for you. It's time for you to take a walk. Not a walk of shame, a walk of deliverance. And I'm going to ask you to take your Bible, your personal belongings, whatever you brought to church. Maybe you brought a friend to church and your love will bring your friend to Christ. There in Johannesburg, on the balcony, the floor, many, many people there today in Bloomfield, they're in the same. There is no distance in the realm of the Spirit. God's talking to you. God wants to save you today. He's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Today you can walk your friend to the altar. So all over this place, if you raise your hand, take your personal belongings so it doesn't disappear. Leave your seat. Don't think about it, please. From the top to the bottom. Make your way to the aisle closest to you. We are going to pray with you. We are going to believe God for a new life and a new day. Come on, come on, let's clap our hands. Reach out to our friends. Come on on the balcony, walk to the side. Make your way to the side. Make your way to that side and walk to the altar today. Come on there in Johannesburg. Leave your seat as we clap. Come home today. Come home today. Come on, a new life and a new beginning. A new begin in Christus Jesus. A new life. A new begin. This is your day. This is your moment. Come on. Come on, He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Man, jy kan 50 jaar in a kerk sit. Jy kan in a moeder huis slaap en maak jy nie a kar of a voertuig nie. Kerk toe gaan maak jy nie a Christen nie. Johannes 3 sê, Jesus, jy moet weergebore wees. 
Vandaag praat God met jou, vandaag klop hier aan die deur van jou hart. Dit is jou oomlik, dit is jou tyd om jou ja te sê, come on. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost talking to many people in this place this morning. Ask your friend again. Come on, it's never too late. There is no sin he cannot forgive. There is no place you can go where the love of God will not find you. Freely forgiven. Receive God's forgiveness today. Come on. Receive God's love this morning. Come on, young girl. Today, 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 today. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come home. Come home. somebody responds to giving their life to Jesus is proof that Jesus is alive. You know, it's like, with all due respect, it's like people try to convince us that Jesus is not real. Um, once you've met him and you've been touched by him, he's more real than any human being that you've ever met. Yes, it's not some mystical trip. It is meeting a person. I want to encourage all of you, please don't, don't get offended by what I say now. Some of you are going to your families, etc., and they want to slaughter things to make atonement. I'm going to do a, a, a series um, on the blood of Jesus because I realize we need the understanding of, 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 of blood, blood. Sin, atonement for sin is made by blood. But people are still thinking today that atonement still has to be made. Therefore, people offer sacrifices and all these kind of things. And people would rather get mad with me when I say these things. But the Bible says there remains no more sacrifice. Um, you know, we had a powerful move of God in Durban, and we purposely did not broadcast it. So people are hungry, and they don't just sit at home, etc. But several of the young girls and that that came forward that are involved in um, ancestral worship. And please don't say, no, I said ancestral worship. I'm against ancestors. Because then you're a liar. And then you're part of that mob that lie all the time. I also have ancestors. I didn't just come here. I also have ancestors. So let's just get real. I'm against worshiping. Not honoring. There's a big difference. No, don't clap. Just listen. Because some of you, your feathers are up already. 
you have to, you have to, there's one, one God, one mediator, one savior. Nowhere in the Bible did Jesus tell us to pray to anybody else than the Father. We don't pray to Mother Mary. We don't pray to St. Bernard. We don't pray to um, Jan van Riebeek. We don't pray to De La Rey, De La Rey, Sal Je Die Boere Bevrij, Nia. One God, one mediator, one who paid the price for all humanity. There remains no more sacrifice. No. So, so, so to go offer sacrifices means you discard the sacrifice of Jesus. You have to understand it very clearly. You can't do Jesus in the Sangoma. I don't care if you ever come back to the church. I'm going to tell you the truth. You can't do the Sangoma and Jesus, okay? You can't. This thing that's become so popular among young people and fashionable is a lie from the pits of the hell. The devil has no power to give you. The devil has been defeated. Don't look for, for, for power in dead places. Look for power in the resurrected Christ. Say amen. I have to tell you. Because the truth will set you free. Stop looking at the wrong place. Worship the living Christ. And if you're wearing ropes or whatever under your dress or wherever, cut those things. Get rid of it. Get rid of the charms. Get rid of all the other things. Get rid of it. I mean, Pastor Jack was with me and there was this girl I prayed for her and she didn't get a deliverance till he said to me, cut the rope. The minute we cut that rope, the power of God hit her and the devil manifested and that devil came out in two seconds, etc. Hey, to hell with the devil. We are not going to play on Satan's turf. We are the sons and the daughters of the living God and we have the Spirit of Christ living on the inside of us. We do not bow to the devils of this world. Say amen. Come on, man. We don't bow to the devils of this world. It grieves my spirit when I see some of our politicians go and they bow before people that do not worship the living God, that they want to come to church and seek a public platform. It's not okay. Make up your mind who you serve. If the Lord is God, then follow Him. If not, then follow your ball. I've said enough. Put your hand on your heart. God will raise up the righteous in this country. Watch this election. God's going to shock and surprise everybody because God has a master plan. I said He has the master plan, not the devil. Not the devil. South Africa will be fine. Amen, my brother. Pray with me this morning. Say, Jesus, I accept the sacrifice that you paid on my behalf. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. You went to hell. God the Father resurrected you. And today you are alive. So I call upon you, the living Messiah. And I ask you, Jesus Christ, save me. Wash me in your blood. Forgive my sin. Break the power of the devil over my life. I thank you that you've heard my prayer and you promised whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now I declare I am saved by the blood of Jesus. I am forgiven through the blood of Jesus. I am justified by the blood of Jesus. I have a future and the devil has no hold over my life anymore. I'm born again. I'm heaven bound. I'm a child of God in Jesus name. Amen and amen, amen and amen and amen. And upon the provision of your faith, your sins are forgiven you. And listen to me, child of God, the power of the devil is broken over your life. I say the power of the devil is broken over your life by the blood of Jesus Christ. I break every curse, every spell, every generational curse by the blood of Jesus Christ. I say you are under the blood of Jesus and no plan of the devil will prevail against you because the price has been paid and you have been blessed and therefore you cannot be cursed. In the name of Jesus, I plead and apply the blood of Jesus today on you, over you, your family, your house, your possessions. And I say the angel of death will not come near you. You will not be harmed. You will not be touched in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, right now. I thank you. Right now, burdens are lifted. Bondages are broken. 
Curses are broken. Fear is broken. Torment is lifted by the power of the blood of Jesus and in the name of Jesus Christ, the name that is above every other name. Let it be for the glory of the name of your Son in Jesus' name. And everybody says amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we please pray with you before you go home? Thank you for being here today. We pray you come back. We want to give you a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, if you'll turn to my right, your left, please. Don't worry, we're not doing anything weird. We just want to pray with you. In Johannesburg, turn to my right also, please. In Bloemfontein, turn to my left. Everybody's now confused. Just go anywhere you want to go. Links, rechts, links, rechts, links, rechts. Rechts, rechts, links. Links, rechts, links, rechts. Links, rechts. Links. Links, rechts. <laughs> Come on, let's give the Lord one more praise. Come on, man. Feel happy. You redeemed. You delivered. You forgiven. You are justified. Take your seats, please. Take your seats. We're almost finished. We're going to have communion while we worship. So the ushers can go ahead and serve the communion. As I believe. Uh, respectfully, Pakisa. Pakisa, Pakisa. Listen, did you hear these angels? The angels are rejoicing. Amen. Um, okay, now I'm going to preach more because I see it's going to take forever. You know, we used to have Easter services, then we had services all, all day. And all Saturday and all Sunday, and then, then uh, it's like, oh no, it's family time. I get that. This family. No, I'm just playing with you. Don't worry. Let me just read a scripture out of my million that I haven't read this morning. While the communion is being shared about the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 10, the Bible says, Every priest stands ministering daily and with offering repeatedly the same sacrifice, which can never take away sin. But this man, it's Hebrews 10 verse 11 for the media. After he offered one sacrifice for the sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, from that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. Hebrews 10 verse 14, media. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us, for after he had said, this is the covenant I will make with them after those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and minds and I will write them. And he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is remission of these, remission means remittance, which means removal. If something is removed, it means it is as if it had never been. So if it's removed, it cannot be remembered. Remittance. There is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and a living way, which He consecrated for us through the veil, not the veil between the holy place and the holy of holies, the veil, that is his flesh that was broken on the cross. Having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled with an, from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. So you better believe Jesus is coming back. And we're going to talk about it on Sunday because those angels told those people the same way Jesus went, he's coming back again. That's why we have to plan as if he's not coming back, meaning in our purpose to get people saved. I'm just waiting. So if somebody waves at me when everybody is communion, I'll... Mm. So um, as he left, he will come again. I say Jesus is coming again. And the Bible in 1 Thessalonians, when it talks about the last day, says we have to exhort one another that Jesus is coming again. 
so that you don't get caught up in living this life in this world and forget that you are a sojourner, a pilgrim. That you don't get up, caught up in the affairs of this life. But that you understand life is part of the journey. Life is not the journey. Your pursuit of God is the journey. Therefore, we come to church. Yeah, Paul, I believe it's Paul. Nobody knows who wrote the book of Hebrews. I believe he's a very intelligent, intellectual man. Or it must be a woman, and they don't want to admit that a woman wrote it. There's only a book that we don't know who wrote. You're right. Now, right? You know that. Hebrews. Should have been Shebrews, right? No. But in any case, for the Afrikaners. When I was Afrikaans, it was not a Hebrew, it was not a Shebrew. So, so, so when we talk about the church and things like that, it's not to get people religious, because we're not busy with the religion. It's to exhort people. So the Lord is coming. Don't fall out of this race. Don't get messed up. Don't get caught up in this life as if this life is what it's all about. This life is but a moment. It's a vapor. Please, Pakisa, we do this every year. And every year I say we need to be prepared and move things along. Please, time is of an essence. Jesus is coming. And some of you need to go home and tell your friends, Jesus is coming. So I don't want us to have communion here for three hours. And he comes actually while we're sitting here. So, come on, ushers. I love you. But let's move along. Jesus is coming. Amen. Geliefdes. Has everybody received communion? No. I. I toch pastore in asheres asheres. Please, if you haven't received communion yet, will you lift your hand? This is important. There's many people. Let's move. Let's go. On the balcony. I respect your time. That's why I want things to be done. Apology that we're taking so long. Apology. It won't happen again ever. Everybody received communion? Who has not received communion? There's people up there. Let's go. Just don't fall with the tray, brother. It's any case. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Liefde, geduld, a gewip, en geloof. All right, how are we doing? Please, if you haven't received communion, just raise your hand. Up there. Hello. Now Jesus himself um, took the bread, broke it, said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. We do this in remembrance, that his body was broken on the cross for you and me. This is not a religious sacrament. It is one of the foundation beliefs in our church and as Christians that we remember. Amen. In the Old Testament, God always had people put up memorials for significant moments, stones or whatever it was to remember. The cross is our memorial to all generations. 
every time we break bread, we remember our memorial of a new covenant. So please take, this is the veil that was broken for you, the body of Jesus broken for you, that gives you access into the presence of the Father. So please break and partake in the name of Jesus, the body of Jesus broken for you. This is the cup of the New Testament, the blood of Jesus, shed for the remission of your sin. Remission, remittal, removal. It doesn't cover your sin. Once something is removed, it's gone. Please listen to me. One of the devil's greatest holds that he have over people is guilt. Guilt. He reminds you. The blood of Jesus clears your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. I pray today that you will see yourself righteous and if there's any bondage, any burden, any addiction in your life, that the power of the blood of Jesus will break that over your life today. That you will leave this place renewed, refreshed, regenerated. The blood of Jesus shed for you. Drink in remembrance in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that you seal every word to our hearts. We thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit in all our lives. And we thank you. We are confident of the work that you started, you will complete. Now, Father, we just thank you for the anointing, the presence of the Holy Spirit. I commit and commend every person to you within the range of my voice. They're in Pretoria, Bloomington, and Johannesburg, watching on live stream platforms that the precious blood of Jesus would protect, preserve each and every one of us until the day we meet you face to face. I speak the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit upon you. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ be multiplied unto each and every one of you. May you love God more. May be established in the love that God has for you May you live free from every hold of the devil. Blessed coming in and blessed going out in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Come on. Celebrate with your family. Tell somebody about God's love. Come on. I love you. Thank you for being here today. If you're not on a holiday, Sunday morning, and don't forget Sunday night, we have our Easter play or our Passover play. So I don't get into trouble for saying the word Easter. The Passover play. On Sunday night, be out. It's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. Okay, God bless you. Be safe as you travel. Thank you for coming. We love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you in all our churches. Amen.